Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 9, Graphing Quadratic Functions from Factored Form, which is f of x equals a times the quantity x minus m times the quantity x minus n. Classwork, opening exercise, solve the following equation. So this is kind of a warm-up. Uh, leading coefficient a is 1 b equals 6, and c equals negative 40. Okay, when the leading coefficient is 1, and there's no x value in this constant term, there's nothing to, there's no greatest common factor, so we just do factors of c that add up to b. So I'm looking for factors of negative 40. So when I have two factors, negative, when you get a, when you're multiplying two numbers and get a negative, they have to be opposite signs, one positive, one negative. When the middle term, the sum is positive, the smaller one is negative, and the bigger one is positive. Negative 1 times 40 is negative 40. 40 minus 1 is 39. It's not 6, so I continue. Negative 2 times 20 is negative 40. 20 minus 2 is 18, not 6. Continue. 3 does not work. Negative 4 times 10, and there it is. 10 minus 4 is 6, so the answer is x minus 4 times x plus 10 equals 0. There's my factored form, and now we use the zero product property, letting each factor equal 0 in solving. So x minus 4 equals 0. x has to equal 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. And x has to equal negative 10 in this one. So I say or in between. So the answer is x equals 4 or x equals negative 10. Okay, example 1. Consider the equation y equals x squared plus 6x minus 40. A, given the quadratic equation, can you find the point or points where the graph crosses the x-axis? Well, this is the same equation as up here, except our y is replacing 0. So we would just simply factor this the same way. We would get this same answer here. Um, so given the quadratic equation, can you find the points where the graph crosses the x-axis? Well, if x is 4 and it's on the x-axis, then y is 0. And the other point would be this negative 10 that we found in the example or exercise and comma 0. So the points are negative 4, 0 and negative 10, comma 0. B says, in the last lesson, we learned about symmetrical nature of the graph of quadratic functions. How can we use that information to find the vertex for the graph? Okay, so remember, if we have a graph... Just going to do this real quickly, and I have 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 as my 4, 0 as one of my x intercepts, and negative 10 as the other 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if we go all the way out here to negative 10, this is where this parabola crosses the x axis here and here. Okay, so there's our two points that we just found in A. Our y-intercept is negative 40. A is positive, which means it opens upward. So if I go way down to negative 40, that's where it's crossing the y-axis. And it's opening up. So it's doing this. It's coming down. And then it's going to do this. And it's going back up. So somewhere around here. And they're asking in the last, it's asking, how can we use that information to find the vertex? Well, remember, the vertex is halfway, since it's symmetric, halfway between 4 and negative 10. And the distance from negative 10 to 4 is 14. So if I just count over 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, my axis of symmetry would be x equals negative 3. So the vertex is negative 3 comma something. And that something is used to, you find that by plugging in the x. So if I say y equals negative 3 squared, I'm just substituting it into this equation, 
negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 minus 40. Then I get y equals 9 minus 3 minus 40. So y equals 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 minus 40 is negative 36. Okay. Did I do that right? Negative 3 squared is 9. Minus 3 is 6. 6 minus 40 is negative 34. Okay, this wasn't making sense to me. Um, it just didn't seem right with the... Why is my eraser not working? Okay, so I made a mistake. Let me just fix that. All right, so here's where the mistake came in. I forgot my 6. Okay, so it's x squared, x squared plus 6 times x minus 40, which is 9, minus 6 times 3 is 18, minus 40. 9 minus 18 is negative 9, minus 40 is negative 49. So that's negative 49. I realize I made a mistake because I know the y-intercept is negative 40, so I have to be lower than that on the left. It's got to go lower and then come back up because I'm closer to, I'm on the left of the y-axis, so that's how I knew I had made a mistake. <clears throat> okay, so the y-intercept was 0, negative 40. How can we find the y-intercept? It is the c value. So the y-intercept is when x is 0, y is negative 40. And to prove that, we would say when we're on the y-axis, x is 0. So we would say y equals 0 squared plus 6 times 0 minus 40. And obviously, that would be 0 plus 0 minus 40 or negative 40. Part D. Okay, part D says, what else can we say about the graph based on our knowledge of the symmetrical nature of the graph of a quadratic function? Okay, and then it says, can we determine the coordinates of any other points? So if I go back to my sketch here, I didn't really graph it, this is my sketch. Um, we know it's symmetrical about, I should have used a different color. Here's my y-axis here, here's my x equals negative 3. I know that we have a point 0, negative 40, which is 3 units to the right of my axis of symmetry. 0, negative 40 is way down here on the y-axis. 0 is 3 units to the right, so if I went 3 units to the left, I'd be at negative 6, and that would also be the same y-value of negative 40. So we know there's another point at negative 6, comma, negative 40. Okay, what else can we say about the graph based on our knowledge? Okay, basically what I was just saying, when you have an axis of symmetry and you have a point that you know, there's going to be another point the same distance from that axis of symmetry on the graph. So we can find another point and that was this negative six comma negative 40. E, plot the points you know for this equation on graph paper, connect them to show the graph of the equation. Okay, so I split my screen here, and I'm going to graph this in a program called GeoGebra. Okay. So it says, plot the points you know for this equation on graph paper. So if I go back, and the points that I know are 4, 0, so I need to move this, here, let's move, okay, need to move this over so we see the origin, there it is. Okay, so here's my y-axis here, my x-axis here. We know we have a point at 4, 0, which is right there. We also have a point at negative 10, 0, which is right here, and if I zoom way out, I want to see negative 40, 
I know that negative 40 comma 0, or 0 comma negative 40 is on the graph, so I'm going to plot that point right here. So there's one, two, three points. I want to graph a line. Where's the line, line, line? Line. I know that my axis of symmetry is negative, x equals negative 3. So if I put a point at negative 3 here and negative 3 here, there is my axis of symmetry. So I am 1, 2, 3 units here away from my axis of symmetry. So I go 1, 2, 3 units more over here. Okay, and there is 1, 2, 3, 4 points graphed. And I'm going to plot one more point, and that is my vertex. And when I plug in negative 3, I got negative 49. So I need to move this out a little further. Okay, there's negative 50 right there. So I also have a point at negative 3, negative 49 which is right on this axis of symmetry right there. So let me just move that there. All right, so now if I draw points or draw lines, if, it, if I drew this, it'd come down, curve, and go back up. Okay, so you can see the parabola now. Okay, I'm not going to draw that in here. I could. So if I go here and input my equation, which is x squared plus 6x minus 40, let's do that. Okay, so just to save time, I plugged in y equals x squared plus 6x minus 40. And when I did that, then it went through those points. So now you can see my parabola. Okay. Exercise one. Graph the following functions and identify key features of the graph. So try graphing these. Pause the video, see how you do, and then come back. Okay, so I drew my axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry. I drew my coordinate plane. I'm getting ahead of myself here. And now I want to substitute values in. Graph the following functions and identify key features. Well, I have a negative sign here. I have an x plus 2. I have an x minus 5. So if I plugged in 5 into this, I would get 0. So 5 minus 5 is 0. 0 times 7 is 0 times a negative 1 is still 0. So I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0. So that is one of my root solution zeros. X-intercepts all mean the same thing. And then if I made x negative 2, we would also have a 0 there. Since I am 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units apart, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, again, what we can do is find the midpoint of this by taking negative 2 plus 5 divided by 2, that's the midpoint formula, and that equals 3 halves or 1 and 1 half. So I would have another vertical line at 1 and 1 half. I'll make it dashed. That is my axis of symmetry. And if I find one more point by substituting in, let's see what the value would be at 0. If I substituted in 0, I would have 2 here. And if I plug 0 in here, I'd have negative 5 there. So I'd have f of 0 equals negative 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 5. So you substitute a value in and find the y value. So we get negative 2 times negative 5. So f of 0 equals 10.
So 0, 10 is right here. And I'm one and a half away from my axis of symmetry. So if I go a half and one more, I also have a point here at 1, 2, 3, 10. And if I plugged in 1.5 into this equation, that would give me my y value of my vertex. That would give me my vertex. You always want to have the vertex in your graph. So now I'm just going to do this over. And this time I'm going to do f of 1 and a half or 3 halves. f of 3 halves equals negative 3 halves plus 2, which is 4 halves. Okay, so this 2 here, if I want to make it a fraction so I can add them, I made it 4 halves times 3 halves for x minus 10 halves, which is also 5. And halves. 3 halves minus 10 halves is 5. So that's going to equal negative 3 halves plus 4 halves is 7 halves. And 3 halves minus 10 halves is negative 7 halves. So that's going to be f of 3 halves is going to equal a negative times a negative is positive, 49 fourths, which equals 1 12 and a quarter. Okay, since I was off the graph, I was able to move all of this down. That's the joys of having an electronic version. Unfortunately, you can't do that on your graph paper. So I want to graph the point one and a half comma twelve and a quarter. So I go over one and a half and go up ten, eleven, twelve, and a little bit more of a quarter, right about there. So now, as you can see, I'm not going to draw because it's hard to draw parabola on this screen, but if you see the parabola here. Okay. Okay, so that was graphing given factored form of a graph of a function. Now we have the function in standard form. So first thing I look at, I'm going to just go through a few things. A is positive and it's 1. So it's opening up like this. B is negative 5. And C is negative 24. Okay. All right, so in looking at these numbers here, I know it's opening up. My y-intercept is way down at negative 24. So when I draw this graph, I want my, I need more room underneath the x-axis, so I'm going to graph it that way. Okay, so I, I made my graph majority of it below the x-axis because I knew it's opening up and I knew the vertex is way down here. The y-intercept is way down here. So I'm going to go increments of 2. So this is negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, negative 20, negative 22, negative 24, so I'm going to put a dot there. I know my y-intercept is negative 24. That's my y-intercept. And x equals negative b over 2a is my axis of symmetry. Negative negative 5 is 5. Careful with that. 2 times a is 2. So x is 2.5. So now I'm going to graph that. So I'm going to go over two and a half, draw a line. This is my axis of symmetry. And that is x equals five halves, or two and a half. So I know now another point because of my symmetry. Since I'm over one, two and a half, I go over one half, one, two, and I also have a point here at, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, comma, negative 24. 
Okay. Now I just want to find a couple of zeros. Okay, I want to know where I'm crossing the x-axis. So I'm going to solve this for zero. x squared minus 5x minus 24. Um, that is an a of 1, and therefore I'm looking for factors of negative 24 that add up to negative 5. So they're both they're different signs. One's positive, one's negative, and the bigger one is negative to get your middle term negative. So it'd be 1 times negative 24 adds up to negative 23. 2 times negative 12 adds up to negative 10. 3 times negative 8 that's negative 5. There is the value I'm looking for. It's x plus 3, x minus 8. So I know I have zeros at x equals negative 3 and x equals 8. So if I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I have an x-intercept there. And if I go left 3, 1, 2, 3, I have an x-intercept there. Now I just need to find the vertex. I already know that the vertex is at the point 5 halves comma something. So my vertex is 5 halves comma some y value. And in order to find that, I'm going to substitute that into my equation here. So I'm going to say 0 equals 5 halves squared minus 5 times 5 halves minus 24. So this is going to be 0 equals, actually it's not 0, that would be f of 5 halves. Let me fix that f of 5 halves equals f of 5 halves equals f of 5 halves equals 25 over 4 minus 25 over 2 minus 24. So I'm going to fix this by making all the denominators the same. 25 over 4 minus 50 over 4 minus and I need to multiply this by 4, which is 96 for 4. And that's going to equal 25 minus 50 is negative 25. Minus 96 is negative 121 over 4. 4 goes into 12 three times. It will not go into 1. So the answer is 30 and a quarter. 30 and a quarter. Negative 30 and 0.25. So negative 26, negative 28, negative 30, and a little bit more, and my vertex is right there. Okay, so that's what the graph would look like. It's really tough to draw, but there it is. And this one's coming up like so, curving. Okay, that was wacky. Cool. Now function on the pen. Okay, so it's, it looks something like that, but I, it's tough to draw with this pen. All right, moving on. Here's two more. Pause the video, see if you can do them. Okay, so I drew the coordinate plane here, the axis, the x and y axis, and now I'm going to plot values. So when we're given this form, we want to plug in values such as 2. So if I substitute in 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, and then this whole thing would be 0. So I have an x-intercept of 2, and I have an x-intercept of 3. Okay, so I know my axis of symmetry is in between those, so I know that my axis of symmetry is 1, 2.5. So if I substitute in 2.5, so f of 2.5, I'd rather use fractions, is 5 halves. So it's 5 times 5 halves 
minus 2, which is 4 halves, times 5 halves minus 3, which is 6 halves. So that's going to equal 5 times 1 half, 5 halves minus 4 halves, times 5 halves minus 6 halves, which is negative a half. So 5 times 1 half times negative a half, 1 half times negative a half is negative 1 fourth, so this would be negative 5 fourths. So if I go over 2 and a half, then I need to go down 1 and a quarter, which is about here. So my parabola is going to turn and go like that. My y-intercept is when x is 0. So that would be f of 0 equals 5 times 0 minus 2, which is negative 2, times 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 3 is 30. So my y-intercept is way up at 0, 30. So this would go up way up before it hit the y. So it, it looks something like this. Okay? All right, next one. What do I know? I know the y-intercept is negative 60, way, way down at negative 60. It's opening down, so it's going to curve this way. So it's going to have this shape because a is negative. And... I need to find the zeros. So the first thing I do is factor this. I can take out a negative 6. So I can say p of x equals p of x equals negative 6 times x squared minus 7x plus 10. Why did my pen just turn green? Okay, negative 6. If I factor out a negative, all the signs change in size. So now I'm going to factor that. I'm looking for factors of 10 that add up to negative 7. They both have to be negative, so it would be minus 2, minus 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 plus 2 is 7. They're both negative. So my x equals 2, or x equals 5. So I have a y-intercept at 2, or an x-intercept at 2, I'm sorry, and an x-intercept at 5. x equals negative b over 2a is my vertex x value, or my axis of symmetry. Substitute in my negative 42 for b over 2 times a, which is 6, so that's negative 12. Negative divided by a positive is, uh, negative divided by negative is positive, and 42 divided by 12 is 3 and 1 half. And so my x, 1, 2, 3 and a half, I didn't even need to do that because I know it was halfway between my two zeros. So my axis of symmetry is 3 and a half right here. So I want to know what the y value is at 3 and a half. So it's going to be 3 and 1 half or 7 halves comma something. So I will substitute that into this. So I'm going to do P of, I prefer using improper fractions. So P of 7 halves equals negative 6 times 7 halves squared plus 42 times 7 halves minus 60. And that's going to equal negative 6 times 49 over 4. Plus 42 times 7 halves. This 42 and this 2 will cancel. Now to be 21. 21 times 7 is 147 minus 60. 
this 4 will make that negative 6, negative 3. So negative 3 times 49. 9 times 3 is 27. 2, 4 times 3 is 12. 147. Negative 147 over 2, which is 73.5. So let's speed this up a little bit. Hey, Siri, what's 73.5 plus 147? 73.5 plus 147 is 220.5. Hey, Siri, what's 220.5 minus 60? 220.5 minus 60 is 160.5. 160 and a half. Okay, so this is wrong here. It is 73.5 or 73 and a half, and it's negative. So negative 73 and a half plus 147 minus 60 is what it should have been. And I come up with not that big, huge number of 160 and a half. That made no sense to me. That's why I checked my work. And the answer is 13 and one half. So if I go over one, two, three and a half and go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen and a half is right here. Okay, so let me move this equation out of the way, and now you see where my graph should be. Okay, it's going to come down like that and go f down forever on both sides, like so. I miss a little, it's hard to draw with this, and there you see the parabola. Okay, example two. Okay, example two says to consider the graph of the quadratic function shown below with x-intercepts negative four right here, and two, right here. With, write a formula of, for a possible quadratic function in factored form, which is this form here, that the graph represents using a as a constant factor. So I'm gonna write f of x equals a times x, x. Well, my m and my n are my opposites of my zeros. So if this is negative 4, then this is going to be plus 4. And if this is 2, then it's going to be minus 2. So f of x equals a times x plus 4 times x minus 2 would be a factored form equation for this graph. Now b says the y-intercept of the graph is negative 16. So this value right here is negative 16. Use the y-intercept to adjust your function by finding the constant. All right, so we know that f of 0, that means what is y when x is 0, f of 0 equals this function here when x is 0. So it would be a times 0 plus 4 times 0 minus 2. And that has to equal my 0, which is negative 16. So what value of a would make this negative 16? Well, if I have this now, a something times 4, times negative 2 equals negative 16. Well, that's a times 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 equals negative 16. Divide by negative 8, divide by negative 8, and a has to equal 2. So therefore, the function is f of x equals this with a being 2. 2 times x plus 4 and 2 times x minus 2. Okay, exercise 2 says, given the x-intercepts for the graph of a quadratic function, write a possible formula for the quadratic function in factored form. Uh, pause the video, see if you can do this. I have already brought in the formula four times, because if you write it every single time when you do a problem, that's a memorization process. 
So now that I have f of x equals a times x minus m times x minus n, if I have x intercepts of 0 and 3, that would be x minus 0. So that would be f of x equals a times the quantity x minus 0. But that's just simply x. x minus 0 is x. So I just write an x when there's a 0 times x minus 3. Remember, it's always the opposite sign of this. In this one, it's f of x equals a times x minus a negative 1, so it's plus 1, and x minus my n, which is 1. Okay, pretty simple. And then this one is f of x equals a times x plus 5 and x minus 10. This one is f of x equals a times um, x minus 1 half and x minus 4. Um, I could also change that to this. 2x minus 1, x minus 4. If I can't reduce this, the denominator can be my coefficient. Exercise 3. Consider the graph of the quadratic function shown with x-intercept equaling negative 2. So there's my x-intercept at negative 2. Write the formula for a possible quadratic function in factored form that the graph represents using a as a constant factor. So in factored form, so I'm going to bring in this formula again. That's step 1, write the formula. Step two, substitute the givens. So this is going to be f of x equals. Now remember, the x-intercept is negative two and there's only one. So it'd be a times x plus two times x plus two again. So that's called a double root and that would become a times x plus two quantity squared. Okay, moving along now, the y-intercept of the graph is 4. It's right here. That is the point 0, 4. I don't know why my 4 is always, every single time they do that. Okay, so we do this again, but we say f of 0 equals a times... 0 plus 2 quantity squared equals 4, which equals a times 2 times 0 plus 2 is 2. I'll just show all my work. Squared equals 4, which equals a times 4 equals 4, divide both sides by 4, and a equals 1. So now my formula is going to be this, f of x equals a times x plus 2 quantity squared plus 1. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Not plus 1. It's not a constant. My fault. I just found A, guys. A is in front. And there's no need to put the 1, so nothing changed. The A just is not, it's invisible, because it would be this. So F of X equals the quantity X plus 2 squared. Okay, that's better. Example 3. The lesson that never ends. This one's a long lesson. Okay, example three says a science class designs a ball launcher and tested it by shooting a tennis ball straight up from the top of a 15-story building. They determined that the motion of the ball could be described by the function h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 144t plus 160. So that's always going to be negative 16t squared because that's gravity. 
and the 160 in this case is where we shot it from the top of a 15 story building so we're at 160 that's our y intercept where t represents the time the ball in the air in seconds and h of t represents its height in feet of the ball above the ground at time t what is the maximum height of the ball what is the time of the ball will hit the ground? So if you are shooting a ball off the top of a building, it's going to do this, and then it's going to go all the way down to the ground like that. So that would be opening down. So therefore, my A is negative, and I will have a maximum at the top. So it says... Uh, how can... Factor in the expression help us graph the function. Okay, so it says what is the maximum height of the ball? At what time will the ball hit the ground? So to find the maximum height of the ball, we have to find the vertex. And the vertex is on the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a, which equals negative 144. over 2 times negative 16, which is negative 32. So the x value is, okay, so this is 4 and a half. So when I substitute in this 4 and a half, I will find my y value. So I'm going to just save time and plug this into my calculator. And when I did that, I got... 484. Okay, so this, we were up here, it shot up off the building and went way up to 484 feet. The maximum height of the ball was 484 feet. And at what time will the ball hit the ground? Well, that's our zero. So in order to find when it hits the ground, we have to factor the expression. So it's going to be h of t equals, and when I factor this, Hey Siri, what's 144 divided by 16? 144 divided by 16 is 9. Okay, so we can factor out a negative 16. And that would give us t squared plus 9t plus minus, just kidding. Um, so factor out a negative 16 and we have t squared minus 9t minus 10. All right, so now when I factor that, I get negative 16, t, t, factors of 10 that add up to 9 would be 10 and 1, where this is negative and that's positive. So therefore, t equals 10 and t equals negative 1. Now, if we're on the building, time negative 1 doesn't make sense, so the answer is 10 seconds. So at what time will the ball hit the ground? 10 seconds. With the, with the graph, we can see the number of seconds it takes for the ball to reach its peak and how long it takes to hit the ground. Well, it took four and a half seconds to get up to 484 feet. And then how can factoring expression help us graph the function? Well, that showed us where our x-intercept was, t equals 10. So Once we have the function in its factored form, we need to, what do we need to know in order to graph it? We need to know the zeros, and we need to know the vertex. Okay, it is really difficult to graph these uh, with my pen, so I just copied and pasted the graph of what it would look like. So we are at a height of 160. We shoot it up in the air at four and one half seconds. It reached its peak of 484 feet. And then it starts to descend. And at the 10 second point, it hit the ground. Okay. Using the graph, what time does the ball hit the ground? When t equals 10. Over what domain is the ball rising? Okay, now that's going to be from 0 
from the initial point till we shoot it out of the gun until it gets to this point right here, which is four and one half seconds. Over what domain is the ball falling? Well, it was falling from that four and one half second point all the way to the 10 second point when it hits the ground and it's no longer falling. Okay, it says using the graph, what is the maximum height the ball reaches? Well, we already knew that it was 484 feet. Okay, exercise four says the science class in example three adjusted their ball launcher so that it could accommodate a heavier ball. They moved the launcher to the roof of a 23-story building and launched an 8.8-pound .8 shot putt straight up into the air. Note, Olympic and high school women use the 8.8-pound .8 shot putt in track and field competitions. The motion is described by the function here, where h of t represents the height and feet of the shot putt above the ground with respect to time t in seconds. Note, important, no one was harmed during this experiment. Okay. A, graph the function and identify the key features of the graph. So, if I want to graph this, first I'm going to factor form. h of t equals... Factor out a negative 16, leaving t squared minus 2t. And minus 16 goes into 24 once with the remainder of 8. Uh, let's see. Hey, Siri, what's 240 divided by 16? 240 divided by 16 is 15. Okay, that was easy. So negative 16 times t squared minus 2t minus 15, and then that would equal negative 16t, t, and I want factors of 15 that add up to 2, difference of 2, so that's 5 and 3. 5 times 3 is 15, negative here, positive here, and therefore t equals 5 and t equals negative 3. We're talking about time. I'm not going to use the extraneous solution of negative 3. So at time 5 is when it hits the ground. Okay, so I've already answered that question by factoring this. The ball hits the ground after 5 seconds. The other thing I want to know is the vertex. So the vertex is x equals negative b over 2a which equals negative 32 over 2 times 16, which is negative 32. So that's negative 1. Or positive 1, I'm sorry. Positive. Negative divided by negative is positive. So the vertex is the point 1, comma, and then if I substitute that in, if I put a 1 in here, that's negative 16 plus 32, which would give us positive 16, plus 240, which would be 256. So the vertex is over 1, up to 56. The t-intercepts are 5, comma, 0 and negative 3, comma, 0. Those are my two intercepts. And my y-intercept is the constant 0, 240. Okay, so those are all the key features. The vertex, the y-intercept, and the two x-intercepts. So when I graph this, it would look like this. Okay, much easier for me to do this than it is to graph it the way it was before. So I'm at, at this negative 3, 0 is here, 5, 0 is here, 0, 240 is right here, 1, 256 is right here. And there's the graph of our parabola. Obviously, this didn't happen because we don't have negative time. We are standing right here at time 0, shot the gun, the putt, shot putt goes up and then crashes down to the ground. After how many seconds does the shot putt hit the ground? 5 seconds. What is the maximum height of the shot putt? That is my vertex y value, 256 feet. I'm just going to say this. I'm not going to write them. And D says, what is the value of h of 0, and what does it mean in this problem? h of 0 is 240. That's right here. 
What does that mean? It means that the ball at time zero was already up at 240 feet above the ground. That is the end of lesson nine. Review the lesson summary and go to your problem set.